This is the video for 3.1 graphs of polynomial functions. This will show you how to identify properties from a graph of a polynomial function. The learning targets for this lesson are that you can identify the minimum degree using the graph of a polynomial function, identify the end behavior, identify the y-intercept and the x-intercepts, identify absolute maximums and minimums and relative maximum and minimums, and that you can identify intervals of increase and decrease. All of these come from looking at a graph of a polynomial function. The minimum degree of a polynomial function can be found by looking at how many u-turns are in the graph. So for the first graph, we have one, two, three, four u-turns, which means that the minimum degree of this function is going to be four, plus 1 or 5. And remember that the degree of a function is the highest exponent. For the second, we have one u-turn here, one here, and one here. So the minimum degree will be 3 plus 1 or 4. So in order to find the minimum degree, you count how many u-turns and then add 1. The end behavior tells you what's happening at the ends of the graph. Basically, you always say the same thing. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is approaching something, either negative or positive infinity. As x is approaching positive infinity, f of x is approaching either negative or positive infinity. So I circle the ends of my graph and then write the statement. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is approaching. So as x approaches negative infinity means as my graph is going to the left. So I'm going to look at my left hand arrow. It's going down, which means f of x is approaching negative infinity. As x is approaching positive infinity, f of x is approaching. So as x approaches positive infinity, that's the right side of the graph. So I'm going to look at my right arrow. It's going up, so f of x is approaching positive infinity. For graph number 2, both of them are going up. It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x is going up towards positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x is going up towards positive infinity. Y-intercepts and x-intercepts have not changed. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis, and the x-intercept, or intercepts, is where the graph crosses the x-axis. For the y-intercept, there should only be one. There may be more than one x-intercept. So for this first graph, the first thing we're going to identify is the y-intercept. So remember, the y-intercept is always a point where the x part of the point is zero, and then the y part is wherever it crosses the graph. For this example, it crosses the y-axis at 0, so the y-intercept is 0, 0. Then we identify the x-intercepts. So if you look, there are more than one. We have one here. This point 0, 0 is still an x-intercept because it's crossing the x-axis as well. We have one here and one here. Now remember, x-intercepts, the x part of the point is the one that you put the number in. So the first one crosses at negative 1, so this x-intercept is negative 1, 0. Then we have 0, 0 again. Then we have positive 1, 0, and positive 2, 0. And that is it. For the second graph, the y-intercept again is at 0, 0. And then the x-intercepts are at negative 3, 0, 0, and positive 1. For maximum and minimums, all you need to do is kind of point on the graph where they are. There are absolute maximums or minimums, which I'm going to label with A. These are points that are the highest or the lowest points, and there are no points above or below them. 
Then there are relative maximums or minimums. They might be lower or higher than parts of the graph, but they aren't the lowest or highest point. For this first graph, we have a high point here and a high point here. But looking at the rest of the graph, these are not the highest points. So these are going to be relative maximums. Then we have a low point here and a low point here, but these are not the lowest points of the graph, so these are going to be relative minimums. For the second graph, we have a high point here. However, it is not the highest point, so it's just a relative max. And then we have two low points, this one and this one. The higher one right here is not the lowest point of the graph. So this one's a relative min. But if we look at this one down here, there are no points of this graph that are below it. So this is actually an absolute minimum. Intervals of increase tell you where the graph is increasing and where it's decreasing. I split my graph up using kind of the U-turns as my breaking points and draw some dashed lines. If you look at these dashed lines, the very first interval is increasing because my graph is going up. Then it's going to switch from decreasing, then increasing, decreasing, and then increasing. So we have three intervals of increase and two intervals of decrease. Because these graphs are not going to give us nice perfect numbers, we're just going to get as close as we can. So for the first interval of increase, it starts at negative infinity and goes to approximately negative one half. Then if we look at the next one, it's going to start where that one ended. So from negative one half to positive one half. And again, this one starts where the last one ended at positive one half and then goes to one and a half. Then that one goes from one and a half to two and a half. And then two and a half to positive infinity. For the second graph, we have a point here where it switches, a point here, and a point here. It starts decreasing, then increasing then decreasing and then increasing. So we have two of each. The first one is decreasing and it starts at negative infinity and then decreases until it gets to about negative two. So then this one starts at negative two and it increases to zero. So this one starts at zero and decreases to a little below one, so we'll say three fourths. So that one, this that means the second increase interval starts at three fourths and goes to positive infinity.